morning, everybody. It is actually Thursday now when you're watching this, but in actuality, today is Tuesday for me. Now, typically I like to film the day before, but every now and then I film on the weekends, which I don't upload, and then we have an extra show or an extra vlog, and it pushes the, the vlogs back a little bit. And that's one of the reasons why I'm considering going to seven days a week, because quite frankly, I just love filming every single day, and on the weekends I get bored if I'm not filming stuff. Regardless, today is being filmed on Tuesday, which here in America is, of course, election day. And I think voting is one of the most important things that we can do in America. I mean, it's our history, it's our freedom. People have fought and lost their life forever. But listen, you know, I, I don't think we should be forced to vote, but I personally take it as an amazing, just, it's, it's just incredible that in this country that we are allowed to, to make the decisions to help forge the future. And, and I'm not gonna turn this into politics here because quite frankly, I'm not very excited about either one of these candidates. I, I think that America certainly could do better, but we have to choose one of them. And by the time you're watching this, we're going to already be celebrating either President-elect Clinton or President-elect Trump, which a lot of ways in both cases seems pretty scary. But uh, r regardless, I I I'm going to vote right now. This is where I always vote, and I tell you what, I've never seen the parking lot as full as this, so uh, that's a great thing. That's great voter turnout, uh, and uh, got to go in here. I'm sure these people are going to try to convince me to vote for somebody, so we'll see how that goes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You got it. Thanks. Good morning. Thank you. Thanks. Honest, guys that was one of the most difficult elections that I've ever voted for because there's a lot of policies and things that are really near and dear to my heart you know uh, obviously uh, treating people with respect and dignity is important the LGBT community is very important to me um, you know, a lot of the social issues, especially race, is very important to me with equality for everybody. But on the other hand, the economy is very important to me, as well as our, our trade deals and, and even our military. Uh, so as you can see, neither candidate really comprised both of those things that I really needed, or I shouldn't say both, all of the things I needed. So I did my best to choose the one that I felt would be the best for me and for our country. I'm not gonna tell you who that is, but, but nevertheless, uh, it was an interesting experience. We'll see, the fate of our country is in the hands, and again, by the time you guys are watching, we'll all know the answer for this one. But uh, I do wanna say really quickly, is that number one, uh, you know, if you're watching from other countries or if you're in here in America, I, I really do love America. I love the freedom. I love the ability to be able to vote our free elections. And I also just wanted to give a really big shout out to all the unbelievable volunteers at these election centers. I mean, they're doing their best to make this hour and a half long wait as easy as it possibly would. Um, and and, and they, they're spending, I mean, some of these people, especially seniors, are spending 14 hours hours today volunteering their time to make sure this election is fair and that there's no problems with it so in in one way I think they are the true heroes in this one and uh, regardless it took an hour and a half of my day that's completely fine I feel great about the fact that I was able to put in my vote for not only who's gonna run this country but also my local and even uh, state legislatures and senators and, and district judges and uh, today is a victory no matter who wins. To finish up that thought, I, I want to say one last thing, and, and that's no matter who has won the election, I, I hope that we can find unity as a country. Because my concern is, is that no matter which candidate won, the other party isn't going to want to work with them. And, and that's going to gridlock our country, much like it has the last eight years. Uh, or, or maybe even more, and, and we need progress. So I'm hoping somehow, and I'm not very hopeful for it really, but I'm hoping that somehow, some way, we come together and we can actually get some things done. Things like, you know, healthcare reform, because we, we obviously the system isn't working the way it is. You know, obviously college uh, tuitions are skyrocketing. We need to get that under control. We need to get some of our social programs under control. We need to get the race relations better. We need equality for the LBGT community. We, these are things I hope that we can come together, whether or not who wins. But 
I am pretty concerned about it. So anyways, I got snake work to do. So I just heard something pretty cool from Genesis here. Mr. Snickers boy, how are you doing? I am good, how are you? <laughs> All right, so you, sir, Me. are not born in America. Nope, came and here 2008, got my citizenship three years ago, and now I'm gonna exercise that right by voting. Is this cool or what? I mean, this dude right here is gonna vote for the very first time in our country, not because of an age thing, but because he is a new citizen. He, this is his first opportunity to vote for a president okay. now that he's a citizen. Dude, that is awesome, man. Give me a hug. That's awesome. No, I'm proud of you, man. And you too. You too vote too. The colored hair women. <laughs> I've also never voted. So. You've never voted? Why? No, what? See that? What? A lot Look of people at... all over the world can't vote, and these guys don't exercise that freedom. What is wrong with you two? All right, so guys. I have a gift here that I'm gonna open up. Uh, hang on one second. So, I just got this gift, and, and I know what it is. It's actually a company I spoke to earlier this week, and they said they're gonna send me this product to take a look to see what it is. And uh, here it is. It's actually Herptopia. Uh, it's a coconut fiber substrate. So it's a new company and they contacted, they wanted me to try this out uh, for bedding for reptiles, you know, from tortoises to ball pythons to you name it. So anyways, I'm gonna give this a, a shot and, and there's a chance I may actually be heading down to their plant to actually go take a tour of their plant and see what's behind this product and then put it to the test. Uh, you guys can expect me to report later on about how I like this product and you might see in a future vlog or snake bites episode, me heading down there. Uh, do that, so. Okay, so with all this election talk, I kind of thought of something. There's really one true way to know who to vote for, and, and animals always know, so I've got a couple ideas. Let's try this. Hey, Genesis. Yeah. I need you for something, okay? Yeah, hold on, Kelsey. Hang on, we got some important business here. How do you feel uh, about helping me decide who to vote for today? All right, uh, come with me. All right. All right, you gotta trust me on this one, right? I do. Well. God. <laughs> this is gonna be, it's gonna be worth it. This is scientific. Put your hands out, like that, yep, like that. Mm. What kind of test is this, man? Don't is worry, it... this is this is scientific as could be. I need you to, oh I need you to come up here, put your <laughs> hands straight out. No! Straight out, like that. Oh. Now start wiggling them, start wiggling them. Oh. Keep going. You got to <laughs> you gotta go down. Wiggle and go down. Oh man, what are you hit? Keep the hands straight out. You never know what's gonna happen. Don't worry, well, this is gonna be good for you. What kind of animal is this? Don't it all depends on which snake. Don't worry. I'm gonna get bit by. <laughs> hands straight out. Straight yep. Hands out. Hands out. Open your palms. <laughs> and they go straight down. Down, <laughs> down, 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 down. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did something get you? I don't know. I didn't feel pain. I just felt. Okay. All right. Keep trying, and then maybe cross your hands back and forth. Oh. Very. You gotta go down further, all the way down into the. Ah. <laughs> what was get, that? <laughs> did it get you? Yeah. All right, guys. So you can take your blindfold off now. <laughs> Sorry, man. I was kind of being a wimp there because I didn't know what kind of snake it was, man. <laughs> We see here, right there, this is scientific. Thank you, Genesis. Yep. Now you know who to vote for tonight. Yep. Always okay. a man of science. <laughs> <laughs> Always a man of science. Thank you, Genesis. I don't know, do you think that that's scientific enough, just having one experiment? Let's go ahead and try something different. Uh, I've got another idea. All right, so test number two for Clinton or Trump would be a black mouse in a white mouse. You're a football player. It's in your blood. That's racist. Your soul. That's racist. Your eyes. That's gay. That's homophobic. That's black. That's racist. This is science here that I'm trying to achieve. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a black mouse and a white mouse and I'm gonna hold each of them right together and we're gonna see which one RJ actually takes. You know, that seems pretty reasonable, right? So again, black is for Clinton, white is for Trump. And again, I'm just gonna take and just hold both of these. And I'm gonna to try to hold them as close together as possible. And I'm gonna let RJ decide 
if he's a Clinton supporter or a Trump supporter, okay? So here we go. What do you want? What the heck just happened? <laughs> <laughs> what? what in the world? RJ's not happy. RJ, what was that all about? You had one job, RJ. So guys, uh, I don't know. I think that uh, we're just gonna have to go with your gut instinct and not leave it to the animals because uh, there's one thing that they always say in show business, don't work with children or animals. And RJ certainly proved that to be the case. Onto something a little bit more serious in all honesty is that um, you guys know that I've had this kind of stance. It, it, and let me start by saying that I'm not against anyone that breeds um, you know, the big snakes, retics and, and berms. I just have chose over the last 10 years or so to not breed them, you know? Because, and for me personally, it was that I felt I needed to really understand who was gonna be buying these animals. And, and again, this is no pointing fingers at anyone. Everyone's gotta make their own personal choice. My point is, is that sometimes when you have a big snake, um, you know, I'm not so sure that everybody should own a snake like that. And, and, and again, that, that's, I just did a show yesterday on snake bites, and if you haven't seen it, please check it out. Uh, it's about ownership of big snakes, and, and I think responsible ownership is completely fine. But So anyways, my point is, is about 10 years ago, I stopped breeding big snakes because I felt that I didn't have the time or energy to really vet the people that would potentially be buying those snakes. Now I have a dilemma. If you remember yesterday with Lucy, as a matter of fact, I'll show you right now. She's just in a bad mood today, guys. Lucy, oh, she is in a bad fucking mood. Oh, shit. So you could tell I was saying she seemed to be pretty moody for some some reason, and uh, and and she really did. You know, she just wasn't acting normal. And uh, let me try to see if I can get in this cage just a little bit here. Uh, so she wasn't acting normal. And she was just kind of acting a little bit more aggressive, kind of like she is right now. She's kind of, you know, perked up really quick. Well, anyways, yesterday I found her inverted. You know, so basically what it was is she was what we would call uh, thermal regulating. And, oh, sh see her? I mean, she is just in a bad mood all of a sudden. She just completely struck at the glass. So, anyways, my point is, is that she's been extra moody, and I've noticed she's looked a little bit fat, like, like she, but she hasn't eaten the last few weeks. And sure enough, what that is, is that's a sign that she's starting to produce follicles and getting closer to an ovulation. Now that puts me into a very tough position. And, and I hope I didn't make the wrong choice because there's a chance that when a female like this ovulates and hasn't been bred, they can sometimes come become what they call denosia or egg bound and, and, and sometimes they'll die. That's basically what happened to Twinkie, my friend Jay over at Prehistoric Pets, big reticulated python. So I made the choice, and I want to know if you guys think I made the right choice. I made the choice of throwing this male in right now. This is, uh, this is actually a, um, a, a, a semi-dwarf, it's a half-dwarf. Uh, lavender retic that is really a gorgeous animal and he's the only male that I actually own uh, and I threw him in with Lucy yesterday uh, and I saw some courtship now I didn't see actual breeding uh, they could have bred overnight they could breed tomorrow I have no idea what's gonna happen but I did see some courtship yesterday she was kind of wagging her tail uh, he was kind of riding her so I'm assuming they probably bred last night anyways my point is, is that Lucy could possibly have a clutch of eggs uh, in the very near future, in the next, you know, couple months. And then I'm gonna have to really be careful uh, because of my position on, on who should get those animals. And, you know, certainly some people might say, well, you could always, you know, have the eggs and you could freeze the eggs and, and not let them hatch. You know, some zoos do that when they don't wanna produce, say, Komodo dragons because they have too many of them, they'll actually freeze the eggs. So that's certainly a possibility. I would feel a little bit bad about that personally, you know, should I freeze eggs that would be viable babies or should I, you know, this is a lot of hypotheticals that would mean that, you know, he would have had to have bred, she would have to have taken, and gosh, she is, she scares me just looking at her like that, um, you know, she would have had to take, she's going to have to have a good clutch of eggs and, and they're going to have to hatch. Those are a lot of what ifs, right? But let's say he did breed her. Let's say she does have a good clutch of eggs. Let's say that she has, she'll probably have 40 to 50 eggs. 
do I hatch them out and then just really work hard at trying to find 40 or 50 people I feel are responsible enough to keep a big snake? What do you guys think? I mean, I really need help. I mean, the, first and foremost, I just wanted to make sure that Lucy was not going to die. You know, that, that was the biggest thing for me was that, you know, she wasn't going to get egg bound and she wasn't going to have a problem. So, uh, so I chose to breed her just in case so that she doesn't because she's such an amazing animal. But this does totally make me understand why she was so upset yesterday when I took her out uh, and filmed snake bites is because she's, you know, snakes sometimes get a little bit more agitated when they're gravid or starting to become gravid. So uh, everything makes perfect sense. Her refusing food, her swelling up, uh, her inverted, her, her cantankerous attitude. Everything makes sense right now. So let me know what you guys think I should do. Go ahead and comment down below and, and give me some advice because this is this is one of those times where I really do need it. Look at these storm clouds coming in over here. I mean, those look more like uh, spring, early summer storm clouds. It is two o'clock in the morning. It doesn't appear that this election is gonna get called tonight, but it does seem that we're gonna have a president-elect Donald Trump. I've just received a call from Secretary Clinton. She congratulated us, it's about us, on our victory, and I congratulated her and her family on a very, very hard-fought campaign. I mean, she, she fought very hard. 